Welcome back. I am really excited about this video. So let's start this with a story. So one of my colleagues at work asked me how I keep myself updated and how do I have got so much knowledge about a testing framework. I gave him the answer. You need to learn how to read the documentation. And he was very confused. Like, what do you mean by read the documentation? I can go and watch a training course. But the main idea is if you know how to read the documentation and how to figure out your way to the training course or through writing test, you will succeed. So in this video, we will be writing tests. We will be looking at the documentation and throughout the course, we will be following the same pattern where we try to figure out things by looking at the documentation and using the examples that are already provided and updating those examples. So let's get started. All right. So to write tests, again, go to playwright.dev forward slash dogs forward slash writing test or you can just go to playwright.dev and click on writing test on the left hand side. So this documentation is really important. So we are going to follow this documentation in these lectures because it already is there and you can easily access it online. So how do you write test? Again, in the last video, we did a setup of the Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to open the Visual Studio Code. And this is what we had previously. And if you remember, if you want to run a test, you can just click on the play button because you have got that Visual Studio Code extension installed on your machine. So let's delete that file because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to start with a brand new test. I'm going to delete the test examples as well. So any test you are going to write would be in the test folder. So let's start with an example test. So over here in the documentation, it says first test and it's talking about running a test, which is going to the playwright website, which is the playwright dev, and it checks the title of the page. So if you look at the title, it has got writing. Let's go to playwright.dev ourselves in the browser and see what the title of the page is. So if I hover over it, it says fast and modern reliable. It's, it's a long title. So I'm going to do a view source of this page and look at the title element. So after all this long text over here, there's the word playwright. And this particular test is actually checking the page, which is a page that we visit has got the text playwright in the title. Let, let's do it and then uh, we'll get to know how, how it, it works. So a new file a file which has got the ending as it's a postfix dot spec dot ts. So I'm gonna write, say new my first test dot spec dot ts. And over here, I'm going to import the line. So I'm importing the test and expect. These are the two functions that I'm importing. And I'm going to write the test. So the syntax is you write test. And then as soon as you open round back, it will tell you what's the first thing. So the first is the title of the test. So we can write a descriptive title um, and this could be check page title is correct. Uh, over here, they have written it like test has title. So it reads like test. We could potentially use the same language, which is a good language has title. And then let's look at the definition again. If I do comma, it says the next thing is the test function. So this test basically takes two arguments, title and test function. So test function would be the async function. So you just write a async and then open the round bracket and close the round bracket. And that, that's the whole function. So how do you write the body of this function? This is the parameter that you use. For defining the body and inside the curly bracket you define the body of the test now each test basically gets a page object so we can it gets an object we can get a page from it um, now if you want to understand what is page i'm going to get to it in in a bit but this is how you're going to access the elements so page dot if I type go to, I can specify the URL. So in theory, you could just copy paste the whole thing. So test has title and this is the async function. Inside this async function, you get the page context 
and using the page context, you go to a page or a website and verify that this has a page title called Playwright. Let's run this and see what happens. So as you can see on, on the bottom of my screen, it is running the test and it has passed the test. Now to understand that this test is working correctly or not, I'm just going to change it to blah. So in theory, this would fail that test. So let's run it again. To run it again, you just click on that tick that you saw on the left hand side. Now, as you can see that it has failed. And if you remember at the beginning of this video, we looked at the title from the view source. It, it was this title, fast and reliable da, 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 and playwright. So this test is actually working. We have just proven that this test works. And this assertion is actually checking that this string, this is a substring that exists in the page title. So we have got a test which is checking, which is visiting a website. And then it is checking if the website title contains the word playwright. Let's do another test. So from the same website, you can just go and copy another one. So if you save, when you save the file, it will automatically detect that you have got another test and it will show you the play button. So if I click on this play button, if you notice it, some of the lines were getting highlighted and there is some number in front of these lines. What this means is that every time you run the test, it runs it line by line and it tells you how much time it took on each of these lines. So if I run it again, Notice that it will go through all this and it highlights each line. So what this test is doing is you can read in the description test get started link. So it visits the website playwright.dev. It goes to the page and gets the link by rule and looks for the name get started. So let's do it manually because then we'll be able to understand how this is working. So that's the get started button. It is going to the page and looking at the get started button and then it clicks on it. So if you click on it, it says expect page to have heading with the name of installation. So it is looking for heading with the name installation. And this is the heading with the name installation. So if I change that to introduction, because I can see introduction over there as well. Does this test still pass? It does because this is also a heading. If I change it to you will learn. So as you can see, I'm changing the text i'm playing with the test and this is what i want you to do in these lessons like try to be creative try changing the text try to change elements so that you can learn what happens so now the test failed if the test fails how do you know why it failed you can just right click and inspect element and remember the browser is your friend so this was not a heading it is strong the, it is between the html tag strong but if you look at this introduction over here, it is under the heading. H2 is a heading. If you look at the installation, it is under H1. So it is a heading. So as you can see, it can it is very intelligent in, in understanding what is a heading and what is not. So this is your first test uh, that you can write yourself. There's another example of a test that I want to share with you in this video. So let's uh, undo the introduction bit. I'm going to run the test again so that it will pass. And I'm going to uh, take a snapshot. So given that we can copy paste those two tests, we can write one ourselves. So test uh, take snapshot. So this is a, just a string. You can write anything over there. Then async function uh, with some body and this is how what the syntax is of the async so async round brackets then equal to uh, and then greater than sign and then the curly brackets inside the async you will have the object which is curly brackets which gets page and you use this page in the body of the function so i'm, I'm going to do page dot now i don't remember on the top of my head how to do a snapshot so i can potentially type s and it will show me all the possibilities or I can go back to the documentation and search for over here screenshots. So if I do full page screenshots, I can see this is an example over here. So that is how you will find what you're looking for in the documentation. So I'm going to copy this line and 
Again, look at the code that I was writing. I forgot to write the word await. Every step in this playwright test needs to wait for that step to complete. And this await is a keyword that tells the step that it needs to wait at that particular point. So await page, page is what we got over here, dot screenshot, I remember the screenshot appeared when you type dot s in the menu. So page has this uh, function, which is a screenshot, and then you can specify the path and you can tell it a uh, full page or, or not. But which page should we take a screenshot of? So you need to go to that page. So I'm going to copy this await page, go to playwright. So go, go back to the same page, take a screenshot. I'm going to run this particular test. And as you can see on the left hand side, a screenshot.png has appeared and it is the screenshot of the playwright and it's a full page screenshot. So there you go. We have just written a test which can take a screenshot. We have written a test which can check the title. We have written a test which can look at the headings. Well done. You have written your first test. Now that you have got the basic code, on your computer, try to play around with it. Try to change the words, try to change the description of the test, try to change the function names and see what it does. This is how you will become the automation guru. And in the next video, we will be taking it a bit further on a higher level where we will be interacting with advanced web elements. So keep watching.